Yes, hello today. Look, we've got Zenkai Awakening Super Vegeta. Cue the intro. Welcome to my channel where cringy intros are cringy. All right, so as you can see, he is out now. Let's actually take a look at his kit. I got already a sneak peek of what his kit looked like prior to actually his official release. So I kind of already know how I feel about Zenkai Awakening Super Vegeta or Vegeta's. Uh, so let's actually take a look at him. Uh, let's assume 14 stars. The reason why is because at this point, if you've been playing this game for a long time, or even, you know, for a couple of years now, you probably have this guy already at seven stars, if not more. So <clears throat> as a result, if he is 10 stars or nine stars or even seven stars at this point, just if you're going to get him 14 star him, let's cover if he's worth it. Personally speaking. No, <laughs> no, he's not worth it. I know that's going to like shock a lot of people and a lot of people are going to be like, boo, you're wrong. But hear me out. All right. Super Saiyans are primarily strike based units. OK, so as a result, when you're considering a unit to be strike based and you have this character who is uncharacteristically blast based and then he's also because of what he's holding, he is holding a strike and blast card. He is obviously filtering the pool with a little bit more blast heavy cards than necessary. And instead of give, doing like an 8-4 split for your Super Saiyajin strikes, you're now doing a 7-5. And realistically, if you can run someone like Super Saiyan Gohan, the LF uh, future one, or alternatively the Fem Borley, the yellow Super Saiyajin Borley, what is the point in running this guy? On the other hand, however, this guy's a perfect, perfectly fine bench unit, and also because now he's Zankai boosting your yellow, that only further gives you an argument to actually run this dude, whereas before, he was just a horrible bench unit, because realistically, a Z ability isn't actually that necessary to Super Saiyans in the first place, and people quickly took note of that, at least high-tier players, Whereas a lot of lower and mid tier players kept on using him thinking he was good, but turned out not because I'll go over that real quick. So when it says critical damage, it's not referring to how often you actually deal, like how often the rate happens. It is just buffing the damage and your damage is already buffed insanely by an insane amount by Bardock to the point where you're just doing a win more situation and that's it. And that's primarily useless if you can be buffing like actual defensive properties or alternatively even just more uh, strike based opportunities or even health. So this is was normally useless, but now because of the Zenkai ability itself, whatever yellow that you're actually using in, in place of this dude is actually going to be a threat. So I can definitely see this guy if you're a Super Saiyan's main Definitely try him out. Like, obviously, if you're putting resources into this dude in the first place, try him out. See how you like him. Obviously, play styles do matter. But overall, when it comes to how he synergizes with his team, not so great. Now, with that being said, if Super Saiyans ever does a shift into a more Blast-focused team, then obviously there is a huge argument for this dude, uh, just due to the fact that he is solid, is just that he isn't necessarily the most amazing in terms of stats. If we take a look at stats just real quick, uh, his strike stat is not very good. Like for a Zenkai, he's just, it's just not good. It, it's just not. His blast attack stat is very respectable. It's actually really good. And then his strike defense and blast defense are just decent. They're the average of what you would expect from a lot of Zenkais at this point. And then his critical damage is, like his critical is okay. For a Super Saiyan, it's okay, but it's not the most amazing thing I've seen. Okay, but with that being said, he is Cell Saga, which does mean that they're, with the new equip, there is something to be said about that. But again, I don't really recommend this guy on Super Saiyans unless you like that mixture or you like his playstyle along with whatever you're doing with your Super Saiyans. Alternatively, maybe you're just putting him on... Vegeta family, in which case, I mean, you can, but Evolution Vegeta exists, so, and Angel Vegeta exists, so I don't really see the point. You could also put this guy on Saiyans, but again, there are other units that better fit the bill. I feel like this guy's gonna be a hot commodity for maybe like 
a couple of days only because of A, showcases, and B, you know, he's, he's new. He's fun. <laughs> He'll be fun for a little bit. Uh, but overall, I don't see him being super, super spectacular. Now, again, this is just based off of what I'm seeing and nothing more, right? All right, so let's take a look at some of the stuff that he does. Final Flash, it's your standard stuff. That's fair. Uh, key form attack, increases damage, decreases, uh, actually increases the quality of your card. Blast card, so that's good. Uh, Final Chase, which is the um, alt. Recovery, key recovery is in improved. Okay. And then also downgrades your ability's card draw speed. Okay, solid. But you gotta land, so you gotta land it. All right, in regards to the main ability, let's take a look. So draw the ultimate card's final chase, that's the ult. Restores own key by 20. Okay. 50% uh, to ultimate damage inflicted for 15 timer counts. Okay. Reduces damage received by 20% for 15 timer counts. Okay. It, it's okay. It's, it's solid. Like, it, there's nothing wrong with that inherently. It's a, it's a solid main ability. One thing it could have done better was heal, but fine. Um, okay, let's take a look at the unique ability. So we got Absolute Pride, so up to 80%. 10 counts to get to 80. Okay, and then effects reset on Switch. And this is only for Blast. See, that's unfortunate, because if it was for everything, like just, just damage in general, that would have been way better, obviously. In that case, you could actually make a very solid argument for this dude to actually be the main core for yellows. Whereas right now, not so much. All right, let's take a look at Intimidate Blast Defense Down. So inflicts all enemies with attribute downgrade plus 20% to Blast Damage received for 15 timer counts when this character enters the battlefield. Okay, so that's nice and all, but again, he needs to enter the battlefield so that if you switch out and you have your other units, sure, their bla the blast that they carry now because of this dude will be increased, but 20% to Blast Damage received isn't inherently huge and anything that can essentially block that or is immune to that this won't matter so realistically i don't see this being super super useful but at the same time it's not bad again if this was specific not like specific to blast only this would be way better it's because of the specificness to blast that it hinders its potential especially if you're trying to have a more strike focused team and yet this guy is doing a whole bunch of blast. All right, let's go Rising Battle Hunger. Let's take a look at this passive. Zankai 3. So while this character is on the battlefield, apply the following effects to self when enemy switches character. So this is when your opponent switches. Restores key by 30. Okay. Reduces damage received by 30% for 10 timer counts, which cannot be stacked. So if they switch again, you do not regain the buff. That, that's it. Restores Vanishing Gauge by 100%, activating once. That could actually be clutch. So... With that being said, though, we also have to consider the fact that if your opponent is actually reading the kits, if they're understanding what characters do, then in that case, chances are you're not going to really allow this to happen. Or if you do, you're doing this in the, in the knowledge of the fact that you're trying to do something specific. Like, for example, if you want to lock your opponent in, so let's say I'm playing movies and my opponent is playing the Super Vegeta. And I switch into the red Bojack. So I've locked you in. You have the yellow. I switch in. Your Super Vegeta now gets their Vanish Gauge back for whatever reason, okay? And this is obviously a very specific scenario. Then I activate my ult with the red Bojack. And then I use my Awaken card. You can't dodge it again because he removes your Vanish Gauge. Alternatively, like the green EX Vegeta. I can switch into that. You pop my main. You lose your Vanish Gauge anyways. Alternatively, let's say I switch in because I need to. You now have your Vanish Gauge back, but then I catch you with a green card. So as a result, like, like an AoE green card, you're knocked back anyways. Doesn't matter. So as much as this is good, it's not exactly like meta-defining. It's more so it's good if you can catch your opponent off guard, but that's about it. It's not exactly like the utmost amazing thing I've ever seen. Okay? <clears throat> and then unprecedented display of power. Applies the following effects to self when this character enters the battlefield. Restores health by 10%. Okay, not bad. Restores key by 40. Okay. 30% to damage inflicted for 15 timer counts. Okay. And then 60% to strike damage inflicted for 15 timer counts. Okay, not bad. Um, overall, does this fix his inherent problems for strike damage? No, it doesn't. 
And the reason for that is very simple. It's only for 15 timer counts. And the 30 percent and the 60 percent do not add up to 90. It is more so just about the fact that it will not stack, not in the way that you guys think. You're going to be applying buffs in particular orders, and then that will be your overall stat buff. It doesn't just 30 plus 60, there you go. No, not how that works. It's individualized, and it's applied by taking the percentage of your base stat, apply it there, then, then do the same thing with the new application right there. All right? And it's basing it off of its own set base. So it's a lot of complicated math. I don't want to go into it for a video like this. But overall, it's not the most impressive thing. Now, with that being said, is this character a bad unit? No, he's not a bad unit. He's actually a solid unit. And I could definitely see him maybe down the line if Super Saiyans ever change to a more blast-focused team, then absolutely this dude could be a very, very powerful unit. Because, obviously, him being a Super Saiyan and gaining crit buffs off of Bardock... And then it being blast focused, maybe being 7 5 for blast in favor, then I could definitely see this guy having a strong, strong argument. But until then, there is really no reason when you have two other yellow units that, despite not buffing Super Saiyans directly, have just way better kits to the point where it's not worth running this dude, at least not inherently as the main yellow for the team. Now, if you want to use him as a Zankai buffer, for your team absolutely go for it if you want to do a more like blue yellow yellow situation or whatever whatever crazy compilation thing you want to do you can do that too overall will his damage be busted i don't know maybe if you set him up right yes if the stars align absolutely but you can say that for a lot of characters so realistically how i look at this unit is i look at it like just in in regards to how he will actually perform within the meta. And I just don't see with the kit that he even has right now that he will be performing at the level that we, ex we would like him to. Even though, because that's the thing. Just because you have four passives doesn't mean that you're better than a character with two passives. Especially if those four passives feel as if they're trying to balance you more so than actually give you the extra edge. So... Food for thought when it comes to this. But overall, like, just in general, if you want to spend on this guy, you can. But don't forget, Black Friday is coming soon. Come November. Sometime in November. I'm not sure exactly when. And as a result, I would strongly suggest saving your CC if you're looking for hype characters. Because that will be the time to be really throwing your CC at whatever's coming out then. So I'll let you guys know when that's happening. But overall, with that being said, guys, that's the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't hesitate to tickle the like button if you haven't already subscribed. And click at the bell for more notifications so you never miss another one of my videos. Have yourselves a salty day, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you had a time, Phil G. Phil G.